Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the trading session dated Tuesday 19th of May. I'm recording today's video 6.15pm Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday the 19th Eastern Time. I was expecting a bit more upward movement. The target was 2135 to 2137. We got a tiny bit more upward movement falling just short of that target. It may be over there for the S&P. I have my wave counts now expecting a trend change, but the trend change is unconfirmed. If we have had a trend change, we should get some early confirmation tomorrow with a clear breach of the upward sloping orange channel at the hourly chart level. While price remains within that channel, it is entirely possible that we could see another couple of days of upward movement to overshoot that trend line of the diagonal and give it a really typical look. However, the structure is now complete at all wave degrees because we should assume always that the trend remains the same until proven otherwise, we should assume that the S&P remains in a bull market while support of that long-held bull trend line is strongly holding and price remains above it. And so for that reason, I'm moving the degree of labelling within the diagonal all down one degree as I said I would yesterday when the structure was complete. All my wave counts are identical up to this point here and seeing a fourth wave correction within an impulse over and the final fifth wave beginning here. This main wave count will now see the, in, the contracting diagonal as a leading contracting diagonal for a first wave within minor wave 5. At 2571, intermediate 5 would reach 1.618, the length of intermediate 3. Intermediate 3 was extended, intermediate 1 was not, so it is possible that intermediate 5 could be that long. If we get to the first target and price just keeps on rising, or if when we get to the first target the structure is incomplete, then I'd use the second target at 2880, primary 3 in its entirety would reach 2.618, the length of primary 1. This bull wave count will only hold while price does not breach this lower aqua blue trend line by a close of 3% or more of market value. If this trend line is breached by a close of 3% or more of market value, this bull wave count will be discarded in favour of my bearish alternate. If we have a diagonal structure complete here, the final fifth wave may not be about to overshoot the 1-3 line. It may have ended absolutely perfectly at that trend line. We may be seeing the beginning of some downward movement. For this main bull count, which must be more bullish, because we should assume the trend remains the same, we'd be looking at a small second wave correction. Second waves following first waves and leading diagonal positions are usually very deep, but for this one I'm going to expect it to be much more shallow than normal, because it should find strong support from this lower aqua blue trend line. We may have an overshoot of that line and then price may quickly return above it like we had for this fourth wave correction end here, but we didn't get a close of more than 3% of market value here. A big trend change was not indicated. This trend line is extremely important. It is drawn using a traditional technical analysis approach as outlined by McGee in that classic technical analysis of stock trends. It is reasonably shallow, it is long held. It began back in November 2011 and it is repeatedly tested over the years. So when we have a close of 3% or more of market value, we would be using it in the manner McGee outlines that would indicate a substantial trend change for the S&P. It doesn't tell us what Elliott wave degree the trend change would be, but for my wave counts it would be either primary or for the bear rate wave count cycle degree. It would be substantial. For this main bull wave count, minute 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 1820.66. Let's look at how the final fifth wave zigzag may have ended at the hourly chart level where it began down here this point down here. Within an ending diagonal, all of the subwaves must be zigzags and the fourth wave must overlap first wave price territory. Within a leading diagonal, 
the second and fourth waves also must be zigzags. The first, third and fifth waves are most commonly zigzags, but they may also be impulses. So this structure most certainly could be a leading contracting diagonal. And for leading diagonals, the contracting variety is more common than the expanding variety. We may have had an end to the diagonal structure here. The final fifth wave may have ended with not really, the tiniest, most pathetic little overshoot of this trend line. Or we could get another one or two days of a little bit more upward movement to better overshoot this line. Contracting diagonals very commonly have fifth waves which overshoot the 1-3 trend line. Now that's what usually or more often happens, but not always. Sometimes the fifth wave ends perfectly at that line. We may have had that happen today. We've got a little bit of downward movement at the end of Tuesday's session, but it is not yet enough to tell us that the final fifth wave is over. When we have a new low below 2117.97, that's this price point right here, then downward movement may not be a second wave correction within this final fifth wave, and so a new low below that point tells us this final fifth wave must be over. That would give me a little confidence that we have had some kind of trend change up here. When we have at least one full hourly candlestick below this trend line and not touching it, we shall have trend channel confirmation that the final zigzag of this diagonal structure is finally over and the next wave down would then be underway. Minute wave 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, a new low below 1820.66 would give us final price confirmation that the trend change is more substantial. In this case I would expect minute wave 2, if this is what the downward movement is, to be more likely to be shallow. Finding support close to the aqua trend line and so a more likely place for it to end would be the 0.236 Fibonacci ratio of minute wave 1, about 2055. This was yesterday's main wave count and as I said yesterday, as soon as the diagonal structure could be complete, I would relegate this idea to an alternate because we should always assume that the trend remains the same. While price remains above this lower aqua blue trend line, a bull market should be assumed to be still in place. This trend line is not too far away. If this wave count is correct, we should quite quickly get some confirmation of it. If we have had a trend change here at primary degree, the entire structure up to and including primary wave 3 is now perfectly complete. This wave count would be expecting a fourth wave correction at primary degree. Primary wave 2 was a relatively deep zigzag lasting 12 weeks, just one short of a Fibonacci 13. So to exhibit alternation, primary 4 would most likely be a flat combination or triangle. They tend to be more time consuming structures than quick zigzags. So I would expect primary four to most likely last a Fibonacci 21 weeks, give or take one week either side of that number. It is most likely to take price down to within the price territory of the fourth wave of one lesser degree, so somewhere below 1730 and above 1647. So this is a substantial downward movement. I will only put an invalidation point up here once we have some confirmation at the hourly chart level of a trend change up here. While we have zero confirmation that this structure is complete, it must be ex accepted. It is possible we may have another one or two days of a little bit, just a little bit more upward movement, maybe to 2137, not much more above that at this stage. A primary or cycle degree trend would be confirmed with a new price low below 1820.66 but I would have a lot of confidence in this wave count well before that price point is passed when we have a clear breach of this aqua blue trend line and every day in the text article I link you back to prior weekly charts where I show you exactly how I'm drawing these, this double aqua trend line using McGee's approach. At the daily chart level, this is the bear wave count. This one looks at the possibility of an enormous market crash beginning today, but this is absolutely completely unconfirmed. Price would confirm it eventually with a new low below 1370.58. That's the invalidation point for the bull count. Primary 4 can't move into primary 1 price territory, and this is the price extreme of primary wave 1 for the bull count. 
but for this B account, if the market's crashing, we would have some confirmation well before that price point is passed by looking at structure and momentum. From a regular technical analysis point of view, I'm going to look at ADX, stochastics and on balance volume. Price remains above a 34 day exponential moving average. This supports the idea that the S&P remains in a bull market until proven otherwise. Price remains above the long held bull trend line. I'm just drawing the lower one here, but the situation is unclear. As at yesterday's new all time highs, ADX turned ever so slightly down and it remained below 15, so while price made new all-time highs, ADX indicated that there was no clear trend. If there was an upward trend, it was very weak indeed. The red and green trend, li trend lines, I'm drawing the red line with a dashed line for those of you who are colorblind. This is the red line, this is the green line. They're almost touching, but they didn't cross. So the upward trend was not confirmed, although price made new highs. Stochastics remained in overbrought price territory, but it slightly leveled off yesterday, also indicating a weak trend. On balance volume had turned up, but this trend line here is perfectly horizontal. While price made new all-time highs, on balance volume did not confirm that. There's the smallest, slightest negative divergence here also, indicating that while price made new highs here, if there's an upward trend, it's very weak. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis, and I hope that all of our members are having a most fabulous day.